we're told that they overlap such that the outside of each sphere is at the center of the other sphere. So that means this is the center of that sphere and this is the center of this sphere. So the distance between them is one radius or r. I thought the easiest way to imagine this would be to put this onto the xy plane by cutting through it and imagining that my y axis is running right at the middle of where those intersect and my x axis is running right here. Part of the reason that I did this is that it was easier for me to visualize how we would write something for the volume. What I'm visualizing here, if I sliced through with this line, then whatever the chunk is, it's kind of formed by this part out here. Well, in 3D, that's like a cap that I cut off, that I sliced off of the edge of that sphere, which means that I can find that volume by thinking about rotating this region about the x axis. So that's what I decided to do to find the volume. You could also do this by taking slices, and those slices would all be circles. So I'm going to take that region in blue and revolve it around the x-axis. I know that because I'm revolving around something that touches one of the edges, when I go to write the volume, it, it will be solid. It won't have that hollowed out part in the middle, which means our volume would just be pi times whatever our radius is squared. And then it's going to be a dx because I'm revolving around the x-axis. There's my arbitrary cross section. Well, now I just have to figure out an expression for that radius and figure out what our bounds will be. That part we need geometry for. We were told that each of these spheres has a radius of r. So I had said initially that that means because of the way they're laid out, where the edge of the sphere touches the center of the other sphere, that means this entire distance is r, the radius of each sphere. Well, that's going to give me my limits of integration then. Because if this entire distance is r, then what I'm going to do is take essentially one quarter of that and spin it around in a circle to make half of the volume we're looking for. I'm going to double that to get the volume and say that those cross sections are going to go from 0 to r over 2. Because if this entire width is r, then the half that I'm looking at takes me to r over 2. That also means that the center of this circle must be at negative r over 2 by symmetry. And that's going to be important because I need to know the equation of this circle here on the left in order to fill in what this radius piece is. So the equation of this circle on the left, that circle is centered at negative r over 2 comma 0. So if I think about our standard equation of a circle, that's going to look like x plus r over 2 quantity squared plus y minus 0 squared is equal to the radius squared. And in this problem, we've been told that the radius is equal to little r. That means that I'm all set up to rearrange this to solve it for y. If I subtract this piece over, then I'd have y squared is equal to r squared minus x plus r over 2 
whole thing squared. Again, similarly to the previous problem, when I take the square root of y, I would get a plus or a minus. But because I'm choosing just this part in the first quadrant, I know we'll take the positive portion of y. And I'm going to have y is equal to the positive square root of r squared minus x plus r over 2 whole thing squared. And that becomes our radius. Since when I plug that in for r, the formula is going to have me square it, I'll skip that step and take us to r squared minus x plus r over 2 squared dx. And it would quit right there. <laughs>